Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. As you can probably tell by my voice, <laughs> which is now bunged up as well, I'm still feeling a bit ropey. Um, I thought Dr. Tottenham was supposed to help. Dr. Tottenham helps wolves, didn't help me. If anything, I think Tottenham Hotspur is making me sicker. Um, has there been any cases where you can sue a football club for making you feel unwell? I think that's pretty much what's happening right now. Um, I mean, you looked at it and Lopetegu, obviously known as a, a tactical coach, um, and he just, you could see he was constantly adjusting and tweaking his side. He could see the first half hadn't worked. I mean, he was forced into his first sub when, um, but yeah, Lopetegu, it wasn't only that though. He uh, he made two changes at, at the break, switched from a back four to a back three uh, to kind of match up with Spurs. And he used all five of his substitutions 10 minutes before Spurs made their first one. Spurs didn't make their first sub until 13 minutes from the end of the game. Um, it just seems to be a Spurs thing. Other than Mourinho, Mourinho was very proactive with subs. Spurs just always have had a very kind of set way of managers and substitutions. Um, we always know, and, and Conte kind of keeps to this, that you're going to get one maybe around the hour mark, and you might get another couple towards the end of the game, uh, depending on how things are going. Um, I do... You would think, does this current or this setup, which is obviously now coming to an end, um, where Conte will send a message from Turin or speak over the phone <coughs> and ask for a change to be made, um, or... The flip side is where uh, Stellini and Mason want to make a change and they have to check with Conte. It's not the quickest process in the entire world. Um, but it's not like Conte was like the uh, the, the quickest, most um, adaptive substitution maker ever anyway. Um, that's not really what I'd say his coaching is about. Um, I think, look... There are some managers out there you can see they um, they will put out a starting eleven, but throughout the game they're constantly changing it, tweaking it, um, making kind of decisions to counter what the opposition are doing or try and trouble them. But then there's other managers who believe, well, I'm picking my starting eleven and tactics because of my philosophy and the way I want to play, and I want to imprint them on the opposition, not be worried and fear about them the whole time. Um, and I think it's quite clear Conte is one of those managers and you know he'll believe that his system works when his players properly adhere to it regardless of what the opposition are doing um, obviously he does make the odd tactical tweak um, I've seen him do that I've seen little kind of uh, he often does it within his system though rather than bringing new players on so um, I think a good example was the recent uh Seen Emerson Royale uh, moving inside to help out and, and give an extra body into the midfield. Three little things like that, where players are given an extra little additional job on top of what they do. Um, but he's less likely to kind of change things around and change systems and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And he will point to his CV and he will say, you know, the trophies are there uh, because of the way my system has worked. So... Do I, you know, is it frustrating? Of course. Um, and that's why kind of after the, the game, having seen the way that um, Lopetegu had changed the game and had grabbed back control of it, and you could see just little moments were starting to get them on a new crowd up and going again, um, and it just made a difference. There was a bit of a snowball effect, and... They, they got the winning goal in the end. And, and whereas you know with Spurs substitutions, that on the whole, they're often like for like, um, rather than a, a system changing thing. Um, and if they are system changing, it's normally late in games if they're losing. So he'll throw on another attacking body and an attacker will end up going to uh, play as a wing back. Or actually, we did get a back four in the final stages yesterday. Pedro Porro took that lovely free kick, smashed it against the crossbar. Um, and it was probably one of the best set pieces Spurs have taken in a long time. I know Harry Kane 
did hit the bar, was it against Man City, maybe last season? Um, but yeah, it was a really nice free kick from Porro. And I think we were all thinking, hello, finally, we've got someone that's going to take the free kick. So obviously, Sonny was taking some crackers for South Korea as well. So he takes that. They get another one right in a, a very similar position, really dangerous outside the box. And everyone's thinking, OK, Porro again. He's going to get it even better this time. Even He's going to get it just below the bar. And Harry Kane steps up to take it. And like, I don't know whether it's a case of just he's a senior figure and he can strike a fantastic shot from outside the box. So he, he thinks, right, OK, it's my turn. I'm taking this. Um, or whether in training he is <coughs> smashing every single free kick into the top corner. I don't know. But my goodness, they're not good. They're not good. Um, yeah. It, I think this one went into the wall. Uh, it was not great. It really wasn't. I mean, He's, I just find it weird. He's like he's one of the greatest goal scorers of the modern era, Harry Kane. But just free kicks are not his friend. You know, he's scored a couple of deflected ones. I remember the one against Aston Villa, of course, famously, which kind of kick-started the Poch era. Uh, he scored one this pre-season, did he? Was was deflected? I seem to remember that as well. But in terms of just a straight-up free kick, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not his forte, but he keeps showing resilience. He keeps plugging away, but it's almost like just maybe just let other people have a go. You know, it's 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 it's, it's not for you. You've got incredible talents in every area, but maybe uh, maybe just not in this particular one. So, uh, oh my goodness, it's seven nil. This is just madness. What a game to try and do a video to while uh, in front of while watching. That's, man, their goal difference has absolutely flown up as well. So that's going to be another big issue as well, just to chuck that on board. Um, but yeah, what comes ahead for Conte, really? I kind of feel like his tenure is, uh, is really going to... Uh, could be judged on it, to be honest. It, uh, it could be judged on what comes next, really. Um, in these coming, well, what is it? Well, we are March, February, April, May, three months. Um, if he is to go in the summer.